Hello everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Kawana Creates. My mission here on this earth is three what? Three letters. That is E I C. That is elevate, inspire, and create. That is elevating you to that next level so that you are inspired to create your own world. That is my mission. That is my mandate. That is why I am here on this earth is to bless your life. God has given me a purpose and I am just so excited about walking it out. Okay, well, I, you're probably wondering why. Why does she have a camera facing this dandelion? Y'all see this dandelion right here? I came outside to go throw some these little teeny bar stools um, in my living room away. I love them because I had paint. I did a beautiful painting on the bar stools. It had like leather on them, and I had, it had a design on it I didn't like, so I took it and changed it, and wrote was able to put the creative word love through the design and been having the stools for a while but you know I have a four-year-old that stands up on things and uses things to get to places and places yes and um she has you know happened to do a little hard work to these uh bar stools you guys and um I just decided because one of them was wiggling under the this the leg on one of the bottom was wiggling and the other one the string was coming out the side where they uh, long story short it, it's a long story they're still beautiful and I like to hold on to things because I think in anything that you can find some form of life but some things you know what I'm learning I'm just having to throw away I was throwing them outside putting them in a dumpster and as I was walking back to the house I looked and I noticed it was nothing but God that wanted me to notice it. Now now I'm looking closer and I'm even seeing another one that wants to butt up. But I noticed this dandelion, you know? And I was like, wow, as, as cold as it is outside, there's a dandelion. There's a dandelion. And you're going to have to bite it. You hear me? I, I'm going to get through this video, y'all, because it's something very important. It's, it's short, but it's important, and I really want to bless you all. And so, the dandelion, I looked up the definition of a dandelion, and it's not really a flower. A lot of people think it's a flower. Back in the day when I was a little girl living in the country, I used to see them all, you know, in the, um, what do you call it? at the park the real rec center park it was a park area where the swings and the basketball court was at and i remember as a little girl going picking up all the mini danny lines and um making a little bouquet taking them home and stuff but at certain times of the season but actually before it became a dandelion it would be this little fuzzy little uh i think it was before or after it would be this little fuzzy little flower which you could just blow and you when you blew it all the little feathers would go everywhere but right here, out in the cold, there's this beautiful dandelion. And so my um, the title for today's lesson is Life in the Wilderness. Life in the Wilderness. Look at the other one. This one hasn't butted up yet. Life in the Wilderness. Life in the Wilderness. And so, you know, I was getting ready to go back in the house, and I heard the Lord speak to me in a soft voice. I just heard him, you know, like literally speak in my head and, you know, because he'll speak to you through your voice, but he'll speak to you if you really take the time to listen to him. He was like, I want you to do a video and I want you to talk about the wilderness. I want you to talk about life in the wilderness. I want you to talk about this, how you found, you came outside and you found this life right here in the wilderness. And look, and look, look, y'all. If you even look even closer, look at that snail. You see that snail? I'm all outside and I'm finding life in the wilderness. It's cold outside, and people are most most likely people are at home. They're getting off of work. They're home, cuddled up on the couch. They just made an awesome um, dinner. You know, some of that. Uh, what's that food called? That uh, sleeping food. That's another name for it. But that home cooked food that make you go to sleep. You know, some good soup and some crackers or some cornbread, and you cuddled up in the house. It's a Friday night, and you're probably watching a movie spending time with your hubby or spending time with your children or just relaxing i don't know catching up on some homework you're just relaxed 
in the wilderness time what what goes don't what goes on in the wilderness time okay about about this time when it's fall it's winter time out here you notice you see all these leaves on the ground you see all these leaves leaves are on the ground you know uh the the grass is all has turned into what you want to say dead dead grass and it'll come back to life around about springtime so the wilderness is the time for in the time of wilderness what do we do we hibernate in the wilderness animals hibernate i think people hibernate to a degree because you don't want to come out you want to stay in the house you want to stay cuddled up you want to you want to stay warm you know we all love the summer but we all sometimes have to go through wilderness in our life but even when we go through the wilderness times know that there is some life in the wilderness actually not just some life there is a lot of life because god is doing something in you in the wilderness and it's really your reality of how you look at your situation while you're in the wilderness or while you're in that period where you're growing through you're going through growing pains and you're developing or you're maturing or for example someone's going back to school and in the beginning, they're so excited about being in school, you know, especially if you're going back to finish your degree that can help your future, that can give you more money, that can help the world and blah, blah, blah. But during that season of in, while you're in school, you have what? You have what they call homework. You have research papers. Um, and a lot of times we don't want to do the work. <laughs> But guess what? In order to get what we need to get in life, we have to do the work to get there, right? So the wilderness time is a time of, Actually, where I believe a lot of churning and a lot of um, trials or and, and development is taking place in our life, if we truly allow the Lord to do what he needs to do to us in that wilderness so that we can one day get to that promised land, you guys. You know, and so with that being said, and I can talk more on that, and it's crazy. This is nothing but the Holy Spirit because I had a note card. I had written out some notes of what I wanted to say and when I came out here to, to get ready to start the video I couldn't find it and I heard, heard uh, God said Kawana don't worry about the don't worry about the car just go out there I told you to do this video so I'm going to give you the words I'm going to tell you what to, I'm going to tell you what to say I'm going to lead you to the scriptures and so um Jeremiah chapter 2 okay um Jeremiah chapter 2 the title in the Bible it says Israel forsakes the Lord and I'm going to go ahead and read this. It says, The word of the Lord came to me. Go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. I remember the devotion of your youth. How a bride, how as a bride, you loved me and followed me through the desert, through the land not sown. Okay. It says, Israel was holy to the Lord. Hey, are you holy to the Lord? The Bible says that Israel was holy to the Lord. It says the first he was the um the the first fruits of his ar harvest. Okay, it says all devoured her were held guilty and disaster overtook them, declares the Lord. Disaster overtook the people of Israel. Okay? Now there's a reason why disaster overtook them. Let's find out why. Hear the word of the Lord, O Israel. Jacob, all you clans of the house of Israel, this is what the Lord says. What fault did your fathers find in me that they strayed so far from me? They followed worthless idols and became worthless themselves. They did not ask, where is the Lord who brought us up out of Egypt? And led us through the barren wilderness, through a land of desert and rifts, a land of drought and darkness, a land where no one travels and no one lives. I brought you into a fertile land to eat its fruit and rich produce, produce. But you came and defiled my land and made my inheritance detestable the priest did not ask where is the lord those who deal with the law did not know me the leaders rebelled against me 
The prophets prophesied by Baal, following worthless idols. So, Israel, they have forsaken the Lord. They have forsaken the Lord. Israel decided to do their own thing. And if you want to go back to study this some more, I encourage you to go to Jeremiah chapter 2. I read verses 1 through 8. And it's talking about how God had, um, in, in, in the Israel's youth, God had, uh, had brought them out of the desert and brought them into a, a fruitful land, a fruitful harvest. But how that the people, they refused to continue to obey God. They chose to do their own thing. And due to that, they, they made other idols their gods. And, you know, one thing in life, God does not want us to make anything an idol in our life. He wants us to keep him first all the days of our life. And, and God had brought them up out of the wilderness. God had put them in a new place, you know. Um, and they chose to do what they wanted to do. And I also want to take you to Deuteronomy chapter 8. And I'm going to read verses 5. To the Lord tell me to stop. It says he led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness. That thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of the hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness. Something your ancestors had never known. To humble and test you so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today if you ever forget the lord your god and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them i testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed like the nations the lord destroyed before you so you will be destroyed for not obeying the lord your god i want to reread one part to you uh, it's for actually, uh, and you know what I said, verse five, y'all, I meant verse 15. So it was Deuteronomy eight, verse 15, and it was 15 through 20, but I'm going to reread the first couple of verses. Verse 15 says, he led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and dread waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of the hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known, to humble and test you so, at, so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power and strength of my hands have produced this, this wealth for me, but remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. So confirm his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors at it, as it is today. Hey, you guys. Just like this flower down here. You see that flower? See that flower? Just like that flower. It's in the wilderness. God is still giving this flower nourishment. He's still giving this flower, this weed. You can. Some people want to call it a weed. Some people want to call it a flower. I'm going to call it a flower. Because out here in the grass, you see nothing but dead grass and a lot of little weeds coming through. But why is it that as I was going back to the house, I saw this one weed, this one beautiful yellow weed. flower this dandelion out in the cold my eyes caught this one 
beautiful dandelion. And then as I came back out here to do the video, I noticed that there was another, another, another dandelion that's attempting to blossom. Branched, coming from off of the same branch, because they're all part of the same weed, if you notice. But it's wanting, it's wanting to bud. It's wanting to live. It's wanting, not, not live. Yeah, live. Exactly live. It's, it, it wants to become whole. You know, I don't know the full stages of, of you know, plants and, and the stages of what they go through. But I know it starts as a seed and then it forms. But out here in the cold, as I was walking back to the house, I noticed this beautiful yellow dandelion and I believe the Lord was wanting to tell me Kawana I've given you life and I've given you life more abundantly don't be dismayed by trials and tribulations don't get upset don't curse the day you were born don't think the worst is happening because of situations going on around you Know that I am God. Know that I am the God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. And that I will never leave you nor forsake you. I have given you life in the wilderness. Hold on to my promises. Trust me and know that I can do all, that you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Know that it is not you yourself that's having the strength to get up every day to do the things that I have placed in your life in this new season of your life. But it is I, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, hallelujah, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, our mighty counselor, our prince of peace, That who that is who he is, you guys. He has given us life in the wilderness. I had to obey God today and come out here and do this video to let you all know. Because these people in the Bible, in Jeremiah and in Deuteronomy, they forsake the Lord. They forgot about who God was after God delivered them and placed them in the promised land. They forgot. They thought it was them. They thought they did it. They thought that they it was their brains and their studying and, and their working hard that allowed them to accomplish what they accomplished. They relied on their self. They forgot who was the Alpha and the Omega. The one who gave them manna. The one who gave them life. After all the complaining they did, God still took care of them. And they forgot. Out in the wilderness. They was in the wilderness. Look at the wilderness. But God gave them life. Life, you guys. In the wilderness. What has God done for you and that you've totally forgotten about him? What has he done for you? If he never does anything else, what has he done for you? And you haven't chosen to thank him. You haven't chosen to lift up your eyes into the hills from which cometh your help. You haven't chosen to say, God, I thank you for another day. Lord, I thank you for life and life more abundantly. Lord, it might be hard right now, but I'm going to continue to press. Lord, I don't understand why it is what it is, but I will bless the Lord at all times. You, you know, in the wilderness, God, I love, you, I love you too. In the wilderness, you hear that? You hear that? You hear my baby? She said, I love you. God says that to you. He says that to you over and over again. He, he yells out to you in little small sweet voices like my daughter just did and said, I love you, but do you love me? She said it twice and it took for me to, to say it back to her. God is asking you now, 
Do you love him? Then shout it out to him. Worship him. Give him the glory he deserves. Wake up in the morning early and read your word. Get on your knees and pray. Open your mouth and say thank you. While you're at work, tell him thank you. While you're driving, tell him thank you. Do whatever it is that the Lord is telling you to do. It might not be, it, it, it may be something big he tell you to do and it may be something small he tell you to do. But whatever it is, I encourage you to do it. Do not forget about the life that he gave you in the wilderness. You may be in the promised land, but I promise you, just like he promised them in the Bible, if you forget me, I will forget you. You go back and read Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 15 through 20. You go back and read Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 1 through uh, uh, eight. Study the scriptures for yourself. Okay, I'm not a Bible scholar. I'm just a woman who who's passionately in love with Christ, and I I, I hear His small voice speaking to me through the Word while I'm driving, while I'm walking, while I'm in the bed, sleep at night. He's giving me dreams, and I just want to do His will, you guys. I just want to help those who want to be helped. I want to leave my mark here on this earth. But I do not ever, I do not ever, I will not in Jesus name ever forget the Lord thy God who gave me life and gave it more abundantly. And I pray in Jesus name that I will never in Jesus name get to the promised land and forget who brought me there. God keep me humble unto you. Keep me humble. Keep me close to you God. I don't care where. How far you take me in life. I don't care what you do. I don't care what levels you take me. From glory to glory Lord. Let me never forget you. Let me never forget. The king of kings and lord of lords. The people of Israel. They forgot about you. They made idols for themselves and they forgot about the king who gave them life. Y'all, we can't forget about the king. We can't forget about the king. This dandelion is a representation of the king who wants to be worshipped at all times in the wilderness and out of the wilderness. You all be blessed, you be encouraged, and do not forget the king. Worship him in spirit and in truth with all your heart and soul and mind. There is life in the wilderness and there's life outside of the wilderness. We just have to be willing to take a look at the small things in life to remember that he hasn't forgot about us. Even when we're in a drought, we have a reason to praise him. We have a reason to worship him. You have breath in your body right now. If you're watching this video, you have eyes you can see. Hallelujah. Give God the glory. He deserves it all. Be encouraged.